So I've got a little paint splashes, but there's just one decorating them. It's an old carpet, it's got to be replaced. Anywho, the subject of this video is this creature. What the freak is that? I hear you say. Well, to you I respond, it is a cup of tea. One of my Majesty's best cups. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Tasty. Well, there's also this other matter of this other thing. And what the freak is that, I hear you say? Well, this is something known as a visualizer. So let me set it up here. It's not powered on yet. Basically, I can hear you say, what the freak is a visualizer? Well, you know the old uh, projection OHPs uh, from the 60s, 70s and 80s and 90s? Well, this is the sort of thing that replaced them and this is actually uh, from, the f I believe, from the first generation of the machines that replaced them. This has been released in the year 2000. Now, unlike other things that I find, this one had just retired. It was defunct because they got new machines. So there's actually nothing wrong with this. It's fully functional. And I thought, well, this could make... So there's a spot. Oh, it's on the screen. I thought it was on the camera. Anywho, this can be useful in the lab. But before I get onto that, let's have a look at it. We're going to fire it up in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to give you a quick tour of it. So, let's do that, shall we? Right, how are we going to do this? Well, let's take the camera off and have a look. Because it's a long way down because this thing is so big, uh, we have difficulty. Right, it's a JVC Visual Presenter AVP700. As I said, built around the year 2000. On the front here, it's got camera AV1, AV2 as input selects. Uh, manual focus or auto. Uh, when this is lit up, you can see it says near and far and auto. And you've got zoom, telephoto, and wide. And up here, you've got one of the like street lights, strip lights there, which can light uh, the subject matter up. Are you thinking what I'm thinking so far? <laughs> well, this can be adapted. And beneath, you've got this section, which is for lighting up OHPs and 35mm slides. Uh, that lights up beneath, obviously. Um, top panel, you've got a uh, power switch. This which unlocks this neck. Uh, one push set of the white balance and red and blue. And then you can go to manual and set the red and blue yourself. Set the iris yourself. Uh, you've got negative positive, uh, so you can get a negative image. I'll show you this in a minute. Um, black and white color, and the lighting control there, which controls the different light settings. You've got zoom, which is wide, and telephoto. I should just swap this around, and then you can have a look at the back. Right on the back, on the front uh, panel, you saw it had different a inputs for AV1 and AV2. So here we've got uh, video in for AV1, video in for AV2, it's composite with video left and right. Uh, you got output for monitor, output for gen lock, so this can do special effects for videos. <laughs> Handy. Uh, you've also got video left and right, composite, output and S video uh, for the output from the machine itself. It also can, comes with a remote control which I don't have uh, I also believe it can be controlled from a PC, but not play with that. Uh, information? Uh, 31 watts. Hmm, okay. And the plug input. So, I'll put the camera back up and we'll have a look at the different settings on this, shall we? <laughs> right, it is times like this when you wish I had a fisheye lens because it's so difficult to get this all in. What I'm going to do is power it up. I've got the power plug plugged in obviously. I want to have a quick look at the lighting settings before we uh, get an image from it and show you that. Uh, so I've switched it on and you've got all the lights lit up the front. I can now show you those lights. Uh, just put this on here. Ooh, cable. Change the monitor on the there. There you go, you can see it's lit up now and those lights there. We've got camera is an input which is the camera on board obviously. 
near and far set there, auto and tally and wide. Uh, those controls are repeated at the top, but they don't light unless they're in use. Anyhow, let me show you the different lighting settings. So, doink. if I press the lighting button once, which is strangely just at the top, it flashes a few times, and then boom, on come these two, like street lights. So, you can uh, light your subject from above. If I press it again, a few seconds, they go off, and boom, on comes the bottom one. So this is useful for OHPs or 35mm slides, which I'm going to show you shortly because this can view 35mm slides. Handy pandy. Right, so let's see how good this is. I'm going to hook up the DVD recorder, uh, get it recording, and we'll take some images directly from the camera. The camera is, uh, well it says high definition, it's not modern. Let's get the, the lighting bit up. It's not what you call the modern version of high definition. It is 480 uh, lines on the horizontal. So it doesn't say what the vertical is. But imagine it's 720 is it? 720 by 480? So I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, still SD. but. Let's see what kind of image we get out of it. I'll be yeah. right back. We'll get a camera feed from it. Yep. There we go. Pardon me. And you'll see, uh, it's probably because it's uh, a few years old and it's a bit dusty. It actually focuses itself on its own camera dust. Uh, but we'll fix that in a second. Now, if I quickly put this uh, music book on board, we can, as far as we focus it, when we get close, press auto, and as you can see, there is some delay because I'm running it through the composite on the video on the DVD recorder, so there's delay on the screen there. But you can see uh, my own true love there, Tara's theme for the organ. Now, I don't have the lights on at the moment, so if I press uh, lighting once, ooh, there we go. On comes the two lights, and we can position these to get as good lighting as we can on our subject without getting them on the screen. Seems to work reasonably well with them. Uh, let's have a look at something else, and perhaps better use for my channel <coughs> is the 3D print stuff that we do. You can put magazines on this. Uh, and then move the lights out so that they're not directly reflecting on it. There we go. And now you can see that it doesn't quite fit in frame. That's a problem. If I then push this camera up, boink, pull down a bit. There we go. It now fits in frames, so you can see where I'm coming from from this. Obviously, these won't be in the big folder when they're being viewed, but depending on how the quality this image comes out, I may actually use this for the reviews. So tell me what you think of this. Okay, so I'm gonna let this drop. I'll use bodge tape or something to hold that up. Now, another use for these. Uh, before we go on to what I use it mainly for the channel, these work with 35mm get down there, there we go, slides, uh, which you may have, or may not. Now if I put that into there, and then autofocus, is it going to get it? Yeah, good boy. Okay, so we've got that, and then we, what we do, change from the side lighting to the lighting there, and ta-da! Now, let me show you what we can do here. Yeah. So if I go, we'll push that, that's it. Now I can go manual. Um, what that allows me to do is change, my hand's going through the board, I'll just loop around the back out of the way. Uh, I can now set the colours using these controls here. 
to what I want. Uh, I can also press one push set and that will reset it. Override the controls and set it. There we go. Ta da! Uh, the iris. There you can override the iris there. Yeah, there we go. You can't do them without getting to manual, but you can override the iris controls. Uh, nice one here is negative. Ta da! Press that. That oh, is opposite. Kill cool. like that. And also, oh, going back. Uh, black and white setting, which is nice. So, if we then take this back out, let's have a look at one more, shall we? Just because we can. Ta da! Let's put it that way. There we go. Uh, uh, time for a do. Nope, void. Doesn't quite fit in. Doesn't like it was designed for this way. Uh, if I press 1, press set, it should set the settings right there. Now, come on. Now, this is a case where it's not quite getting the settings right, so this is where we use the iris controls. And We'll get it best we can. Uh, a few things. Well, there you go. So, uh, push that. See what it does. Interesting. Anyway, all right. Now, one thing you may not notice, well, I haven't shown you yet, probably, is if I change the lights back. Boink. And then press 4, zoom in on this, just roughly, and push set because that setting's out there. Yeah, man. Oh, but I saw it down, don't I? There we go, done now. Okay, that's our magazine back again. Now, one thing, push the lights out to stop them reflecting. One thing we can do is zoom. So if I go telephoto zoom, it zooms in. This can go up to 20 times. I can see the dots there. And he moved around and, you know, there we go. Now, are you getting the same idea as I'm getting? Let me just zoom out and present to you <laughs> one of these. We all know what this is. Let's zoom in in. No, it's focusing on the dirt again. Yeah. So, there we go, we'll override it. And now we can go to focus. Let's put the arrows up a bit more. Right, okay. Now, as you can see, we've got a PCB there. Da da, something I uh, play with. Now, what I can do is if I press telephoto, not that much, we can talk about these uh, PCBs, do all this good stuff. Uh, turn the eyes down a bit. Put that to medium. Okay, so I, what I can do, I'll cover this board up usually, but this can be used to get a direct overhead camera and decent lighting. Ah, that's better. Pull it aside. We can get so much direct light. Uh, so I can talk about a board I'm working on. And then, for example, if I want to look at those, uh, what you call them? <laughs> Don't, uh, vias. If I want to talk about those vias, I can just zoom in. And we're 20 times soon. There we go. We get a rather decent amount of zoom into it. So we can look at resistors. There's one up here. There we go. We can even see the colours on the resistors. Very nice. 
we can look at codes on chips. There it is. Uh, there we go. Zoom in nicely. Uh, so you can see what we're getting at. You can actually watch me operating on a... I'll cover this up so it doesn't get damaged. But you can actually watch me operating on small areas of a board right from top without all any of the problems we've had before. Now, the camera, again, is SD, but... I've got it on the big TV in front of me. Come, let me show you. And the image looks rather good, so... I don't know, we might be able to use it on the channel, see what this footage looks like. I'll leave a comment to say. But... It does look really excellent. That sounds like something else we can just try. Okay, um, something on another board. Let's just, I'm just going to get another board. I keep talking when I'm doing that. I can see if we can find something interesting. Okay. Okay, this one's going to be more of a challenge for it because it's, <coughs> it's a board, obviously. Uh, but it's got a daughter board on the end, so it's at an angle. Da -da. I could probably prop it up. Um, get it equal. There we go. Now, I'll zoom it back out. Uh, wide. So you get to look at the entire board, as much of it as will fit in. There we go. Uh, I've got a light shining off there, so we can adjust that to help. There we go. So there's the entire board. Uh, doesn't look too clear at this distance, but let's say, whew, let's try something a bit more 3D. Let's try this here. I want to look at this to see if there's any, actually, no, cancel that. Over here, is a tantalum capacitor. Looks like it's got a bit of damage on it. So let me discuss that with you. Bring these in, lights in, and we can take a peek, shall we? Uh, telephoto, let's go in and have a look at this thing. I'm not looking at the chip, so we'll go that way. There we go. As I say, we're doing the review, it is a little bit more difficult because. Uh, of the delay on the TV but when I'm doing this I'm going to set it up properly with a little lead to the monitor so we don't have this problem. Anyway, uh, right, let's see if we can, there we go, we can override the focus and focus on the tantalum itself. So that's very good, we can now see the damage from that angle. If I lift it up slightly, yep, you can see the damage around the side and I can Manually focus it. See the damage there. So that's definitely poorly capacitor. But you see how powerful and useful this is. Because I'm having a geeky moment. Let's have a look at some wiring on this. Let's say, let's zoom out. Leave a one if you're still watching at this point and you're still interested. Okay, there's been a repair there. Right, you can see that. There we go. And this wire comes across. Let's focus it. Yep, this wire comes across. And we want to look at the repair there. So let's get this central as we can. And let's telephoto it in. And we can gently move that across. And it has fully zoomed in, and there we go. Uh, now, if I... Uh, no, I can't do that. Just slowly... Yeah, you can actually get quite a good view. And something else I've just seen there, I hadn't noticed before, that scratch there. What was that glue? Hmm, let's have a look at that. Let's go in and have a look. 
So yeah, we can gently get in there and have a look at what that is. So now normally when I'm uh, doing repairs, I've just got my uh, loops which are glasses which zoom in and I can do it that way. But this means you can follow it. You can follow what I'm doing uh, on here. Will it zoom on, on that properly? Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, you know, I'm just trying to get up on the green trace as clear as possible. Yeah, that's clear as again. But it is impressive as what it can do, especially for free. Uh, so, that's uh, just once more. Have a look at the chip. Uh, so, sort of give memory chips or whatever they are. I assume they're memory chips. There we go. Maybe let's just pretend we're just setting up. And I'm going to have a look at this chip here. I think this might be problematic. It's not really, I'm just pretending for this. Uh, so, zoom in. That one. I know they're all the same. And there we go. You can see that's the Texas Instruments, and it was built in the 49th week of 81. Uh, well, we do do do. Uh, 49th week of 1981. So, there we go. Very powerful, very useful, especially for recording the videos. And uh, that's a good look at the JVC visual presenter AVP-P700. Catchy name. So, there we go. Thank you very much. If uh, you wink. If you haven't subscribed and want to see more geeky nuttiness like this, then by all means subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you very much. And uh, please, uh, thumbs up if you want. Uh, comment if you've got any comments about this or any requests. And uh, my social media, including my Facebook group, which is rather busy, is down below. It's difficult to print out when you're in a camera like this. There we go. Down below. So thank you all for how much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>